Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joy Singh. Joyce, it's an emergency episode here. Uh, we're we're gathered to discuss the Instigators trailer. Um, I've watched that like eleven times already. Today on Thursday, June thirteenth. It's the only thing this, that this will go are down in about. history. The the day of the Instigators trailer. The only thing people care yeah. about right now: the Instigators trailer. Matt mm -hmm. Damon. In case you have like no choice, it's the Emmy ballot. Emmy voting is started right now. It you started today, runs you're, until the 24th. If, if you're a viewer or a fan of us who also votes for Emmys, you could do that right now. And that means I should, I should check vote. in. I should check in with my my friends who are Emmy yeah. voters. They can only vote in program categories. Though. Okay, well, we'll talk to them next. Talk to them and then we'll talk to them about them next week, maybe. Just, just maybe we should do it, you know, to protect their votes after voting closes. Sure. Oh, yeah. We want to make sure we've we got to keep the sanctity of the votes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Joyce, the ballots are out. You've been pouring over the data. I mean, if you mean pouring by counting, yeah, sure. <laughs> so a lot of difficult. The only only Joyce could do this counting. Yeah, no one else can count but me, guys. It's so hard to math. Uh, so what what you find out, Joyce? What's the big? Uh, news lo here? We're losing a lot of slots, guys. Oh no! Oh gosh! Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's already so competitive and we're are and then we're losing spots. Well, I wouldn't say everything is competitive, but um you know, there's a uh, people are going more people are going to be excluded now. So, uh let's start I guess with comedy Joyce. That one was affected. Comedy, well, if no one remembers because I feel like people forget this all the time. Comedy series and drama series are fixed at eight. So don't worry about those. Correct. Still eight. Um, comedy lead, uh, they they will remain at five slots. Okay. So we're so not going to have to keep slot. out Selena Gomez now. I might yeah. have to push, push her out. I, I we'll do our updated picks next week. But it was only five slots. I was hoping maybe we'd get to six so I could just keep Selena in in the end. But maybe I'll have to drop her out. I didn't expect it to be six like that. That one is not surprising to me. You know, no, like no. it was it was already five last year. So still at five. Um, So that that one is unaffected. Right. Um, And if you recall last year and comedy supporting. Yeah. Uh, We lost a spot a spot yeah, and we, went to seven from eight from eight. This year now we're going down to six. Ouch. That's really tough. Before what, are the ballots, what are you gonna do well i don't know I, I already am like before the ballots came out i was like well i put bo and yang in seventh and i'll put uh meg stalter in seventh and then now i'm like well they're both gone and i don't even know who's gonna make it in uh, we have a we'll do our updated picks next week but this is that's already those are deep categories with a lot of people you could put in and now it's down to this i was hoping it would go up to eight so this would be easy now it's up to six no, comedy supporting actor only had 147 submissions and supporting actress had 132. Yikes. That's so, really tough. That's six. So the range for six nominations is 81 to 160. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at my current predictions. So I'm like, do I just dump like Lisa Ann Walter? <laughs> I mean, I did, I guess. I mean, the top six in the odds right now before is still not updated if Meryl Streep is in first. Hannah Einbinder, then Cheryl Lee Ralph, Abby Elliott, Janelle James, and, and Liza colon Zayas for the Who Bear. Who is submitted this year. She, she is, is submitted. She's on the ballot this year. Got a big, splashy Vanity Fair profile this week just in time for voting. I mean, like, definitely getting in. I toyed with the notion of dropping Abby Elliott if it was seven, and I was like, maybe I could put somebody else in. But now I'm just like... This is going to be all the bear and hacks. I guess. And that's I guess it. for it would be double bear, double Abbott, Hannah, and Meryl. I guess. That's uh, it. Although I could, I would not be shocked if Meryl misses, and that would be like the the fake, like huge snub, snub headline of the day. I, I could see that happening, and then like either Lee Ann Walter or Molly Gordon or Meg Stalter getting in for hat. I think with six slots, one and in these categories. A, a voting block that is very focused on the three shows that they watch will be even more focused on the three shows that they watch. And Only Murders was hurt last year. And I'm almost like, what if they're out on it? Selena misses, Steve, Meryl misses. Steve, Steve did not make it in last year. Steve didn't make it in last year. Like, this is a tough, this is tough. This could be literally three shows. I might just put either Meg or Lee Sam Walter or <laughs> Molly Gordon back in for the bear and drop Meryl. 
I've yeah, been Meryl then, winning anyway, so I'm like, why not just drop her all together? We'll I mean, yeah, I've week. never had Meryl in. First. We'll do this next week, but I, I would, I, I think that's going to make it tough. And then supporting actor, similarly, uh, just the I mean, last year it was a uh, Tony Shalhoub out. So it was an eight. We don't. Neither one of us have had Paul Rudd in for, at all. But if you still have Paul Rudd in with six slots, good luck. I mean, that would be like there's enough. Like there's so many bears. There's three different. I'm not, I'm not removing bears. my bears. I have four bears. There's four of six will be bears, and then maybe. And then you're you're gonna keep uh, Tyler James Williams, and, obviously. And I think Paul Downs should get in, all things being equal. Uh, but I guess Carl Clements Hopkins could also get in. I feel like I would probably drop Carl. I did. I'm gonna keep Paul. Uh, and then so those are that's that's in comedy, and then the guest actor. Do we lose anything there? Or no, there's six or five. Comedy guest is still six, so, okay. um, but like I guess the the notable thing there is Robert Townsend not submitted. Twist. I had him in. A lot of people had him in. He shares all the scenes with the Iowa Debris future potential best actress comedy winner, uh, but not submitted. So good goodbye. Good night. The lights for Robert Townsend's Emmy. Yeah. So I don't know who I'll replace him with because I I had him in. So um uh, maybe i'll finally put ryan gosling in so oh nice i i put mulaney in because i had i didn't have him in mm-hmm. i'm just going bear i'm just going all bear joyce that's it bear and hacks is there another hacks guest i was waiting for the uh hal linden i think is a dark horse for hacks um i didn't even look at like the the hacks i mean it's been so crazy it's I all don't... the same it's all the same people we would expect the yeah hal i mean linden like christopher is... lloyd yeah christopher lloyd and hal linden are both on the ballot uh hal linden i think could actually get in frankly but i don't know i might put him in i guess we'll see oh they they submitted uh tim bagley oh that that would, that would be a nice nomination it, it would be great football. and his scene yeah. is great but i just feel like i don't know I, I think it would be very nice can i read you i i love the the guest um ballots yes. because they have to you know submit a description of like yes. their character in the episode so for tim you know, in uh, yes, and it says Reggie teaches Marcus that good things come from letting go. Wow! And then Tony Goldwyn is obviously also submitted for uh, Bob Lipka, part for the course. And his description is Bob Lipka, the CEO of the network, is courted by Deborah in an effort to win the late night host gig. When she finds out she's no longer in the running and drops the nice act, she realizes that he likes her even more. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Hal Linden, Biff tells Deborah why she didn't get her late night show the first time around and reminds her about the uncertain nature of show business. I, I really think he can get in. I might put him in. Christopher Lloyd, Jimmy and Kayla spend Christmas Day at Larry Arbuckle's house to try and convince him to give him the rights to Fatty Arbuckle's story, but find out that Larry has already written a script of his own. Um, Christopher Definitely. McDonald, Marty tries sure. to reconnect with Deborah at the golf tournament and is disappointed when she only has time for Bob. Great scene. Great episode for, for Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. What do you think like of these? How would you mm-hmm. write the descriptions for guest contenders? I mean, those are pretty good. Who do you think? Writes- I mean, like Bob, like Tony Goldwyn has a lot of detail. Tony Goldwyn actually needs a lot of detail. It could be the like, you know, is- their personal rep. It could be yeah. the studio. Tony Golan needs that because his uh, character is all plot, really. You know? Yeah, I mean, like, someone, like, like Tim's is so succinct. Yeah. You know? Um, and, like, that's such a great moment, and I wonder if you might need, like, more than just that, because that that's kind of just, like, a, a, lo- a log line in, like, right. before, like, an episode right. on, like, you know max before so you're saying maybe they should have mentioned the share believe album there for tim no i don't or maybe like a little bit more like detail about like deborah and then Mm. you know like sharing fandom or something who who reads these me that's it only me okay yeah uh no no one reads you know you you don't read so no uh Nothing. Nothing else really stood out. The Townsend one was like a big. So when that happens, Joyce, you've talked about this. It could be a number of factors, right? Per, just didn't submit. Personal rep didn't submit, right? Somebody forgot to file the paperwork. It could be as simple mm-hmm. as that. I, I told you about Timothy Oliphant with the the grinder, right? Okay. And now it's too late to submit. 
Yeah, the deadline was May 9th. You could pull yourself off the ballot, which we yeah, saw. Yeah, you could withdraw. Wednesday. We've seen that happen before. But you can't get on the ballot. So yeah. Robert Townsend Emmy will have to wait for season three of the mayor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh how about drama series, Joy? So eight slots, that's a stable. Fine. Yeah, and Great. series is uh fixed at eight. Right. Drama leads. So we've we've had six in drama lead, you know, past couple years. Um it's gonna remain at six, Whew. all because of Shogun I'm moving here. Wow! So, um, with their the proportional rule, with um, the the gender categories mm-hmm. across the same like level, so like you know leads and supporting, they have to achieve parity. So okay. even if the 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 each individual category might qualify for different um slots they they need to be the same if it's like both leads and both supporting right the drama actor has 81 submissions which is the the start of the threshold for six nominations because six nominations is 81 to 160 and drama actress only had 67 submissions which would give it five slots if they didn't have this parody rule because for five nominations is 20 to 80 but because of Shogun and their two submissions for Hiroyuki Sanada and Cosmo Jarvis, it brought it to 81, six slots. So both categories get six slots. Without them, it would be at 79. Wow. And that would be five. Or just one of them. Blackthorn. We could thank Blackthorn for getting us over to six. Yeah, if, if they had only, uh, if they had split one of them. Yeah. You know, if they split them and only submitted one of them in... uh. In lead, lead and, and one in still supporting, five. Yeah, because twenty to eighty is five. that would be crazy. Uh, it, we would be down to five. In both. Cosmo Jarvis, but we thank you for your saved service. Us that extra slot, so uh, no changes there. Thank, that's good. How about uh, supporting? Where we there's a lot of contenders. Um, this drama supporting, um, seven slots. Bad. That's bad. It's gonna make it harder. Yeah, we're losing one. It, it was eight. It used to be eight. So I, how am I going to pick which morning show scene stealer I will put in for my supporting actress category? Well, the other thing is um, Olivia Williams for The Crown yeah. is not submitted. So if you were tripling up on The Crown. Bad sorry. news. Yeah. Um, this is, I, uh... I guess I'm not I'm not too upset about supporting drama, supporting losing a slot because I was having a really hard time getting to eight uh it's definitely not easy um but i had multiple morning show people in there and now i'll have one less morning show person i guess and then that's an actress and then for actor i don't know i mean sorry nathan lane for the gilded age you were my eighth place position and now i, I don't even sent to the um, wood pile nathan lane i don't know i mean I, I mean, I have like triple Shogun there. So Maybe I have triple Shogun there. too. The odds do not reflect that. But I would say again, betting on the shows that they watched is not a bad idea. So if you're like Loki, if you're like Kei Kwan for Loki or uh, Benny Safdie for The Curse, that's going to be even harder because there's no way. I think they're just going to go down the list of the shows they watched. Morning Show, Crown. I mean, last year they only watched Succession and The White Lotus. And I think this year they're only going to watch Morning Show and The Crown and Shogun and Fallout. I'm actually back on Fallout. I don't think it'll get in here. When were you ever off on Fallout? You I'm were back only on... Off on Fallout because Shogun came through drama and you had to drop it from first. <laughs> I'm back on Fallout in terms of Ella Purnell, I think, getting in. I think I don't think the supporting actors will get in because I just don't think they had enough arc and material and they're not really recognizable names at the moment. But I do think Ella Purnell could get in for, for Fallout. So who are you dropping? Probably... Probably Carrie Preston because I still had her in. I had wow. dropped Reese, even though when we last recorded, I was like, Reese isn't doing shit. And then Reese was like, fuck you, Chris, because I'm on every panel and talking to everybody. You you just care too much about the press aspect. It's, it's very important, Joyce. When Robert Downey every, Jr. Every, won an everyone Oscar. knows who she is. Everyone, Robert Downey Jr. Know, won an we Oscar. Know they, they, they watched the show. Actors watched the show. They nominated her last time. I'm so. thinking maybe she'll get in, but I also think Ella Purnell is like going to get in. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll drop somebody else. I could drop. Uh, I can't drop Maya Erskine because I spoke to her and she was lovely. So she's automatically in my predictions. I'm like that guy who shook Robert Downey Jr.'s hand. If I was a voter, I'd be like, 
Hey, Myers. We, we've talked about this forever. We, we know this. Like, if you were a voter, we, we talked about this during Oscar season. If you're a voter, everyone would just try to ensure that they're the last person to talk to you before yes. you vote. Absolutely. So you would vote for them. Without question. Uh, you so can, that's you gonna can't be... buy my boat like that. No. Guys. So, you, but can you can mine. Yeah. Cash or check, it's fine. Uh, drama and the guest categories, Joyce, anything here notable? For drama. Uh, very notable because we're going down to five, guys. Yikes. That's another only, yikes. There's so 53, many people. 53 in, in guests, uh, submissions, guest actor, and 54 in guest actress. So down to five. So that's really hard because there are so many Mr. and Mrs. Smith people and Shogun people. Well, you know, to my heartbreak, a scar is not submitted. So no Alexander Skarsgård for Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who I actually was like literally today being like, Joyce is probably right. Maybe he'll just get a name check because he's really good. And I was also like, oh, the only episode, the two episodes, it doesn't matter, right? Whatever. But like, they really focused clearly on the premiere of Mr. and Miss Smith and the finale of Mr. and Mrs. Smith because those are like, uh, they did that for directing. And it just seems like in terms of what they're talking about, those are the episodes they care about. And so I was like, well, he's in the first five seconds of the premiere. So like, he'll get in. But now he's not even submitted. So fuck off. And then who else didn't get in? Uh, submitted. Lindsay Duncan, Joyce, for the Lindsay morning Lindsay Duncan, show. not submitted for the morning oh, show. like an easy, an easy nominee. I gotta, I gotta get rid of her. Um, this is tough. I mean, I guess it's like I could just keep the five I have, you know, because like I have the other five for each of them are there. So I, but yeah. <laughs> not great. Uh, drama guest actor. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. Well, again, like I said, we'll do our predictions next week. But I was like, man. This makes it hard. Uh, I mean, I would just, you know, like, I think Claire Foy in The Crown, she's getting in and will probably just win again. And then, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's so hard to tell, like, how they'll respond to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, like, in Guest, because they, yeah. the show could dominate these categories, or it might not, like, who knows? And then you have, you know, morning show people that they've nominated before. I, I feel very confident like the morning show people and any Shogun people on this ballot would get in, right? I feel like that's fine. And Claire Foy for The Crown. But Mr. and Mrs. Smith, yeah, I'm not sure because I'm like, I don't know how much they've watched. And there could be some easy name checks here, like Sarah Paulson, right, would be an easy one to put in. Well, we know they they also don't like care that much about guests. So they might just like be like, hey, I know this person. Let's put it. Yeah. In. And then it's the same thing with the fallout guest actors right. too i have so, both of them in kyle and and michael emerson I, I i don't know um but i'm almost like maybe i should put dale dickey in i guess we'll decide this next week um how about limited yeah, so. series anything there for? limited series uh still at five okay so five slots um i i don't yeah i mean i'm not changing anything from no, but we actor. lost for the actor, I believe. For yeah, for lead, we're going down to five. Bad news for Matt Bomer. Um, did you have him? I um I put him in this week because I was like, you know who's doing great? Matt Bomer on the Bomer or Bomer? It's Bomer. We Bomer. already discussed I, this because I you always forget. Never watched right. White Collar. I got it right this time. Bomber. But I love his press for this, and they've been really putting him out there. But uh, with an extra slot missing now, I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I never had him in any no. way, but I, um, I don't know who I would drop from that because I think like the obvious choice is Paul Shonda because I, I still have him in here. I think he's a tough, that's going to be possibly a tough beat. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, like the only people I feel good about are Richard Gadd and Andrew Scott. Yeah. And then I'm just like, I have John Hamm and Tom Hollander because like, I don't know, like, who else is there? Right. You know, so that's four. And then I have Tony Shalhoub. And that's five. It's tough. I don't know if Washande's going to make it in. It feels like a lot of the, the sympathizer is not even renewed interest in it. Has not picked up. Well, I mean, it only matters for the actors voting for sure. him here. So, like, the show, does, I, don't, I don't have the show getting in. I don't. Think. I mean, I just think in general, even for the actors. I don't know. Um, It's, he hasn't, like, I, I, they there I feel like there was a, a missed opportunity to really even if the show was tanking like ratings wise like there was it was a missed opportunity to really uh focus 
on him being a breakout star like while it was airing you know like this is his like breakthrough performance and all that like it felt like that buzz was kind of muted um yeah. while the show was on and you know like they're um like he did some like pre-premiere press like promo tour press and then <laughs> last week they you know like they're like starting a campaign like rdj out again you know um sandra O oh too so like i don't think the show's getting in but uh i i think it it really depends on like how um apathetic voters are to these other performances yeah. right like i think that would really help them because i think if you do watch the show you would be really taken by his performance um and impressed by his performance um and if you just you know but you're like my friend's dad you're not into feud right sorry Tom out Hollander. On, that's gone yeah. out on tom hollander yeah so i think it would really depend on the passion for these other people that we all assume might be in yeah you know if that's weaker than like the small but passionate support for him it the tough without six there it feels like he could have easily gotten in with six just because like small passionate support and then like there's a six slots and he gets in now with five it's like there really needs to be a mix of passionate support and then apathy on these other people yeah and and it's like i think it's the same thing with limited actress too yeah i was kate winslet making her comeback for the regime this week talking a lot about mayor of easttown to remind people of a show they really liked that she was in that she wanted and also we do not need a season two of mayor of easttown no but anything to get the anything to get her in the combo joyce and like get her back in there for a show people didn't like uh but no i don't and now the extra slot missing i'm like uh, i don't know then she's fighting with naomi watts well, you, you didn't have slot. her i didn't have her in there but i like she was still a possibility for that six slot i feel like but now i'm like with five slots i find it hard to imagine she would get in like i think the four is set of jody foster brie larson sofia vergara and juno temple yeah um i have uzo aduba in fifth and I think naomi I might put naomi back in for me or put her in fifth and call um her. yeah i don't know i i think that's i think that yeah it's another like it'll it'll just depend on like how much they care about uh, that I, like you're right it's actors and who knows they could just name check but i was like netflix does not seem to be prioritizing even in a little bit painkiller i mean that like, doesn't matter like if they just if they've seen it like that that's been right. out for almost a year now right. and it's on netflix they love netflix um, so you're thinking they just might be like hey i saw this i like her i, I watched yeah, it so we're gonna put so her she's in she's a three-time emmy winner right no i know i know so why not just name check her in yeah and like we've like you know we've seen that before um you know when like octavia spencer got in for self-made yeah you know but that would be like kind of the same route it's um like, like you like no one is really considering i mean she got the sag nomination right no i know i know so and then i don't know for supporting no changes right still seven um limited supporting yeah it's seven and this uh but supporting actress was under submitted but thank you to supporting actor for for hitting the mm. the seven slot threshold so we achieved parity so seven for both interesting okay uh, I noticed on the ballot, all of our faves from under the bridge are on the ballot, which I'm calling out. So again, if you're an Emmy voter, vote for some of these people. Chloe Guidry. Vote, vote, vote for the kids, the teens. Izzy G. Izzy G. Um, I was just talking to someone about her performance, her terrifying performance in the finale. Incredible. We haven't really discussed. I don't remember we really talked about it that much when we were talking about the show when it premiered. I don't think we were because we didn't want to spoil it. But yeah. spoiler alert, she uh, goes full... Uh, just complete lunacy and the sociopath at the end. Yeah, and then you you texted me because she starts raging out in a British accent. I was like, Kelly really did that, and it's all real. As it turns yeah. out, all of it, the, all the crazy shit that happens in the finale of Under the Bridge is stuff that actually happens, which makes in it court. Even more... I mean, well, they like you know some. I mean, like the testimonials sure. are yeah like, embellished, but like yeah. that her speaking in a British accent, the drawing I think you said was also real. Yeah, you also text. You were you were like losing your mind over that, and I was like, that's real, and I. I texted you a screenshot the of the drawing. her real drawing from the book because they included that in the book yes yeah. and actually think they lessened the real drawing is more uh unhinged. psychotic yeah unhinged. yeah 
uh, Javon Walton, who's who's listed here as Javon Wana Walton. Yeah, that's his uh, boxing name. Fuck yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, Archie Punjabi is listed on the ballot, which is great. I think mm-hmm. she actually could get in, frankly. I mean, uh, great performance in the finale. Uh, the scene with her and Javon. Really, really good. Um, also represented, I'm just going to use this to talk about Under the Bridge because uh, Ayanna Goodfellow also on the ballot. Who we I love. Lo- love Dusty. So a lot of good potential. And then Lily Gladstone and Riley Keough. But I think if you watch the show, you would know that those are the deprioritized uh, priorities in terms of who we should put our support behind. Yeah, I was also like talking with this person about this. And I was like, you know, I, you know, like no shade to Lily and Riley, who were you know very good on the show. But like the show is not about them. And I understand why people are predicting them, you know, like Oscar nominee, Emmy nominee. But it like the teens carry that show, and you could have cast unknowns in the roles of Rebecca and Cam, and it would still be the teens carrying the show. Would like nothing would change about the show because like their their characters are not the 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 full crumb of the series. You know, like it's it's the teens. Let me ask you this galaxy brain take. You tell me this is a really stupid. I'm, I'm admittingly this is stupid. So you could you just I'm getting you prepared on the ballot. Chloe Gendry as Josephine Bell under the bridge. Then Jessica Gunning as Martha from Baby Reindeer. Top of the odds. Everyone's going to put just, her just, at number just one. Drafting and, off of her. <laughs> and then Vertika Gupta as Rena Verk, right under Jessica Gunning. So I'm like, is it possible that having the two great under the bridge performances uh, san- uh, be in as the bread in a Jessica Gunning uh, sandwich, does that help them get on the ballot more? Will you be yeah. like, look, will people look at this ballot and be like, Oh, fuck yeah. I love Jessica Gunning. Oh, I didn't realize I could vote for Chloe Gidry. She was great. I'm going to put her in too. No, I do think like placement matters okay. for these. I mean, there's a reason they include headshots for the yeah, actors, right? Sure. You know, and I think it's also important, especially when some people have multiple uh, shows and they submit different headshots right. for the shows. Um, sometimes we've seen people in the past submit the same one and then your eyes might glaze over, right? Um, your girl, Anna Sawai, she it's even more noticeable if like you're in contention in the same category like you're not you know in like limited and drama but like you have two shows in limited like she does with shogun and monarch she on the ballot here for both in drama actress different headshot you know she's very listed smart. back to back obviously very good headshot. strategizing yeah Love so that. it just kind of i think it helps you stand out um but yeah i i do think like you know if I mean, I don't know how people would actually, like, do, how how frequently do you think they actually consult, like, the ballot before they vote? Because I feel like you might, you'll probably go into it with, like, your top three faves already, you know? I think you would, so here's the thing. I think you would know, I think here's what I would, here's what I would hope. It's like, you you love Baby Reindeer, so I'm like, I'm going to vote for Jessica Gunning. So I got Nava Mao and Jessica Gunning, like, right in there. I'm already in. And then I'm like, who else? Aja Naomi King. I love Lessons in Chemistry. I gotta, I gotta put her in. So that's three. And then what other shows that I watch? Oh, Ripley, well, I'm not going to vote Dakota Fanning because, like, whatever. Uh, Fargo, maybe Jennifer Jason Lee. Okay, I'll put her in. And now I'm running. I got to fill out these other spots. So let me scroll through. And then you're like, you would flag Jessica Gunning because you loved Baby Reindeer. And then maybe you'd be like, oh, look at these great act- young actors underneath and b- above her. Oh my God. Maybe I should. I loved Under the Bridge. I just forgot about it for a second. I don't know. That's yeah, like I think lunacy. it depends on. <laughs> people actually looking at the ballot instead of and instead of just like going off their memory or like maybe they already made a list of like people they were gonna vote for you know Uh, yeah no I know I I guess I'll be curious to see how this plays out last year we had like Camilla Marone right getting in for like Daisy Jones and like people who were like oh these are fringe contenders who got in because the show was watched and they liked the show right basically like nobody was really widely predicting her last year necessarily um i mean like she was definitely in the mix she, was I, she in the wasn't mix. a she wasn't a shock like the chippendales actor no so, like, and the chippendales ones right ones. so i'm like what do you think this year it could what is it going to be in that front like what are the show like will it just will maybe dakota fan and get in for ripley because we know maybe they watched it i don't know um i mean you could just say just like Hulu shows again because so that's what we're Hulu. going under the bridge. I'm, I got Chloe Guidry and I'm going with that. And I might I mean, put we'll, we'll also in remember there. two years ago when White Lotus was in limited, it was five White Lotus and two Dope Sick. 
Right. I might go Archie Punjabi just because I'm like, I'm going with the major cry. She makes you cry. And it's like, if you watch the show, I think you would put her like near the top of your ballot. So I'm glad she's on the ballot. And also if any, any Emmy voter is a uh, chronically online this week, you know, she got a lot of play w- after the news uh, that Juliana Margulies is not returning to yeah. the morning show. I saw that. Four. Yeah. Maybe season five though, Joyce. We can Maybe season, hope. you know, she's alive. We can so. only hope. There's a great article. The Morning Show season four is going to be the best thing in the whole world. The it's article that you were sending in, in me. In THR, yeah. Everyone go THR read it. The THR article. We're going to plug THR. <laughs> immediately go read this. The show is going to be absolutely unhinged in season four. I can't wait to see who they add to the mix. Marion Cotillard is the only announced guest star so far, I think, right, for the new season. And and they're going to introduce um Alex's dad. And they allegedly offered it to Kevin Klein, who declined. What about like Warren Beatty? Who's going to play? Who, what who's going to play massive, Alex's dad? What massive A-list movie star is going to try to get for Alex? I don't know. That, I mean, they have Apple money to burn. So they do. They could get Who whoever knows? they want. It could be anything. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, so excited to see where that goes. Um, what other stuff? So in terms of the ballot choice, how about uh, any any notable things on writing and directing? A lot of this stuff we knew already based on yeah. like, um, reporting. Yeah, like we already knew that Hacks was submitting the finale bulletproof in writing and directing. This is what they always do. They just submit one in each. Yes. And um they they already announced that they they were doing bulletproof. Um, Good choice. Like two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago now after the finale. So like no change there. Um Abbott is is trying to get back into writing and they're submitting career day which is Quinta's, the only episode Good. she wrote. I, I feel season. like the tra- Abbott strategy this year, I'm like, hey, again, we talked about this lesser so than Hacks, but the best season of Abbott yet and like a rebound season. And I feel like one submission in writing and one submission in directing, very smart in terms of getting it in. Yeah. Um, And then what else did I write down here? Um. Well, the bear, I know we, we had said that it was just- Yeah, we already knew the bear, the bear. But we thought maybe Alex Russell would self-submit for uh, Forks. He did not. He did not. So, so it's just vicious. Um, and uh, Lessons in Chemistry, they only submitted one, two in, in writing, which is good. Mm-hmm. They they did the premiere, I think. Yes. Right? Or no? No, it's the finale. Yeah. yeah. Um, Finale. And then what else? Well, Baby Ranger for directing did episode four. Yes, which you already knew. But no other episodes. Ver- Ver- no. Veronica, uh, how do you say the, per- the director? Uh, Tabisca. And so they, so they had two directors. Yes. So Veronica did the first four. Yes. And I think maybe people might assume they would have just submitted the premiere. Right. Uh, but no, they, I mean, they've had it on their FYC site for yeah. Yeah. weeks. Like if they're do, doing episode four. So they didn't um submit to so that would just be one slot there um and then we already knew about shogun over submitting in yeah, both yeah. a lot a lot of submissions yeah so i think they have six in directing and five in writing it's a 10 episode season choice yeah um and you know i mean i get it in that you know they want everyone to have a chance um, but, what, what, yeah how much do you think it's contractual too it could be contractual but it um i don't know i feel like you no, like no shade to any of them but like i feel like you might need more clout for that to have that kind maybe, of pull you maybe. know what i mean uh i don't think all six will get in but i think if more than two get in like we said it might be tough for it if, to win if it's three yeah if it's three it'd be tough to win uh and then writing i don't think I don't know. I don't even know. There's not a lot of drama. I know Fallout did two episodes for directing, and I think The Crown did two episodes also for directing. Stephen Daldrian and another one. I forget off the top of my head. I can't load it because my uh, yeah, uh, they did two, but but like that was also already on their FYC. Right. A lot of the um, stuff we knew. Fallout, yeah, Fallout did uh, Jonathan Nolan for the premiere, um, and the the past for Claire Kellner. So I think Jonah will get in. I don't know about Claire. I think for this, you'll have Jonah for sure. At least two Shoguns, probably. Crimson Sky and maybe the pilot, frankly, because it's the pilot. Yeah. And then uh, the crown, Stephen Daldry. Daldry for the crown. And maybe the other crown could get in. Maybe. I mean, you know, they... Season five only got 
six nominations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You so, could also get a morning show in there. They've been nominated in directing before, but not writing. So, uh, um, and yeah, I don't know. And a morning show, they did, they did three in writing, I think. Hmm. I don't know. It's, and yeah. How about only murder shows? We haven't really talked about it. Like we said, I feel like this is, the new, I, I, it's it's all anecdotal nonsense but i'm like the lack of slots the less slots i feel like hurts only murders more than any of the shows in the comedy category because it means it could lose it could keep selena out maybe and it will probably not get in a supporting actor nomination maybe for rudd and could even lose merrill which is maybe insane to say but also maybe real so how did they do in some in submissions for writing and directing where i think it'll have a better shot in writing they did two opening night and 30 okay and then they also did two in directing for the show must and then uh it's probe nice. which is uh sherry springer berman and robert puccini love them so yeah and also remember in um comedy directing there is gotta have that multi slot. slot right yeah people forget about this when they always make- forget about it yeah, so I think that one will go to James Burroughs or Frasier, not the Miss Pat show this year. I think that is a good bet. Yeah, and the th- funny thing is, is like when the Miss Pat show has been nominated the past two years, you know, a lot of the reactions on like Noms Day is like, what the hell is a Miss Pat show? How did it get in? We should watch out for it. It's like, no, that's just a multicam slot. But if James Burroughs gets in this year, no one would have that reaction and just be like, oh, of course, it's James Burroughs. It's like main right. check, you know? But no, um, that's just the one by camp slot. What else did I look at here? Uh, just in terms of... Uh, oh, Res Dogs also is oversubmitted. In, oh, I yeah, you, you said this. In writing, which is a lot. Are we sure Res Dogs is getting in for series? For series? I mean, what else are you going to put there for... Your... Colin from Accounts? I'm kind of in on this now. I feel like you're being impacted by a bubble. I'm impacted by the film Twitter... For, slash for tv uh, online bubble but i do think it could get in is the new jury duty without people watching it because it's on paramount plus it's not jury duty <laughs> uh <laughs> that's that's like like no disrespect to it but that's not not the same thing the other things i know uh a couple of things i wanted to flag here in terms of like shows we never talk about one thing I know, what about young sheldon joyce what about young sheldon can that get in last season so I don't in, in like series or just anywhere. What about series and actor? Ian no, Armitage. I don't okay. think so. It's fine. It's I it just it it reminds me of like the good fight and the good wife. Yeah. You know? Um so I mean I think it it honestly because it's it's not multicam, so maybe it would have had a better shot if it were the multicam for just like the multicam slot because it got a lot of acclaim for the funeral episode yeah 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 I, which um, i think they submitted that in writing yeah i think i saw it there too so um other stuff i saw just in terms of ballots generally looking at the ballots uh i didn't get to look at all like i did not i know you were really in there so anything else the one thing i noticed was maya rudolph could have four emmy nominations this year you were telling me this because I haven't even looked at the music category. So yet. for music, she submitted as for her SNL monologue. She did this great song, Mother, basically, or whatever yes. they call it for Mother's yeah. Day. A very viral moment. Probably would get her in potentially as a guest actress, guest comedy actress nominee for hosting SNL. And then she could also be nominated in music and lyrics for that song. Plus, she has the big mouth voiceover uh, and lute as a comedy actress contender. I'm like, I actually think she could get four. I might actually think she gets four nominations. There's actually not a lot of, in the years past, we've seen more original song, like music. There's not a lot in that category this year. So I was just like, it's on the ballot. People know there's a lot of SNL submissions in that category this year. Um, But yeah, it was like, what if Maya Rudolph gets four nominations in a single year? I'm like, do I even know any of these songs? I'm just looking at music and lyrics now. Yeah, I mean, like, have know, I heard any of these? I don't the know. The Pickwick triplets is obviously like what people yeah. want to win to get Pesic and Paul. Uh, and they did, and they didn't submit Sarah Borellis's 
song which for is that. silly because that's the better song uh Sarah yeah, Burrell's but she instrument. is submitted for the the medium time for girls five out which right. is a great song so i think that could get in i think uh Pays i mean Ball like will it in. though because like they've never nominated girls five out for any music category which is insane when pretty you think nuts um joe joe tippett is not nom- is it on the ballot choice i sent you that one a screenshot of for the morning show and yeah, so is so- john hawks uh for the morning uh, for true detective yeah so sarah Bareilles and joe tippett can get uh mm-hmm. his and hers nominations yes, yes. yes. pretty fun um, uh i'll be curious to see i just thought i was like oh that was it. that was the one thing i know it's like my rudolph look at this way to go four nominations i mean i think she she can definitely get at least two probably three and I, I have her in for a really good You still have her in for you have her in for best actress, right? I've I've always had her you in. You were for, you were the first person I think to put yeah, her in. Yeah, I had her in before you did, and you loved the show. And I interviewed her. But well, now I obviously have her in. I interviewed her twice. I did a panel with her, Joyce. It's great. Um yeah, I don't know any of these songs really. I'm like, have I heard them? Probably, but they're not like sticking in my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of SNL songs here. A lot of SNL songs. Jesus. Yeah, be, we'll do our so we'll do our updated picks next week. But a lot, a lot here, inter- a lot of interesting stuff to think about. I would say. I did see that our girl Natalie Holt submitted "Glorious Purpose" for Loki, which is the correct choice. Obviously, the right choice. Yeah, that was the best music in the show since the Succession finale. Yes, and we need her to win to avenge Nicholas Bertel. Uh. Anything else here before we move on, Joyce, for the ballads? Um, I mean, I don't really know because I haven't really gone through everything yet. So we I'm scrolling through we, the headshots. We, we, we rushed to get here to record this. So breaking news between this and the instigators trailer. I mean, yeah. there was really no time. A lot of winning time actors on the ballot. Are you gonna predict any of them? No. I just think that when I I this is I don't believe when the shows are canceled, I do think that will, people will not necessarily go. It's not always the case, but I just don't think they'll go to them. I don't think it's the canceled, like the, the, the stamp of like being canceled. I think it's just, there's been no indication that they like the show from, you know, the first season. Tough. Either. That's tough thing. Yeah. You know, and it's not like season two was like small and mighty. Um, and it just got canceled because it had bad ratings. It was like it just quietly aired. I, I will say R.I.P. to the great Jerry West. But that was the most I've seen about Winning Time was yesterday when everybody was like, Jerry West fucking hated Winning Time. And then Jeff Perlman was like, no, he didn't hate it. And blah, blah, blah. That was at least on my Internet. I was like, well, there at least it's still in the conversation. Um, You know, may, maybe that 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 will help its campaign. Probably not. Or <laughs> an R.I.P. to a great one. Jerry West. Uh. Should we go to emails, Joyce? Sure. Anything else here before we move on? I mean, I don't know. We'll do more. Like I said, we'll update our picks next week. Gives us something to look forward to. Uh, We have a bunch of emails, Joyce. This one is from our old pal, Michael. We're going to start here. Is it a game? It's not a game. Wow. Uh, Email email us at slugfest at goldderby.com, especially with your questions about the ballot or games. Uh, this one's from Michael. Hi, Joyce and Chris. It's me again, Game Master and Mario Co- Marion Cotillard's future enemy campaign manager. Mike. Oh, wow. He's a Marion stan. Yeah. And congrats on that great gig, Mike. That's great. Uh, thanks again for your great response to my email last week and the discussion that sparked for my so-called game. It was the conversation that I was hoping to get from you too. For this week, the hiatus is for the game. For the game is finally real. So no game for me on this email. Sorry to disappoint you, Tim. Tim, if you're a loyal listener, you would know he hated the games. First of all, I'm working late because I'm a singer. Oh, he looks so cute wrapped around my finger. My twisted humor makes me laugh so often. My honeybee, come and get this pollen. To those who are looking forward to seeing Chris recite Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter, you're welcome. I just read what's here, Joyce. So should people start sending you lyrics? I'm Ron Burgundy? Uh, anyways, let's get serious now and philosophical. Let me start my email with these questions. What is TV today? Do people still know how to watch a TV show? And are we expecting too much from TV shows? Like you guys, I've been a TV line, TV fan for a long time at the same level as film. I watch too many shows, even though I get busy at times, but I can't help but think about the current state of TV. TV shows used to be 22 episodes per season. Now they're 8 to 10. Only broadcast shows do 22 episode seasons. A 13 episode season is even rare now. It all takes years to. It also takes years to wait between seasons. It's becoming too common, and I'm not a fan of that. 
do people still know how to watch a TV show? This is a question I've been asking myself, seeing all the responses to some recent shows. For example, The Acolyte. Some people are reacting too much from just the first two episodes alone, not including the toxic part of the fandom here, and complaining about the lack of backstories or the characters or whatever. Uh, if they don't want some creative choices, that's fine. There is legit criticism in there, but we also need to chill out and remind ourselves that TV shows take patience. Not everything is supposed to be revealed in the first episodes. It's all set up. If you want to know the answer, uh, wait for a new episode and reserve your judgment about the storyline when it all wraps. This applies to every single high-profile show that gets released. Let's also remind ourselves that some of the great TV shows were not flourishing in the first couple of episodes and took a while for them to find their footing. Now there are too many expectations, even for just the first episodes. People are forgetting why they should, what they should expect on TV. This is still going, Joyce. It's multiple paragraphs. Wow. I'm gonna this sounds just... longer than a David L. email. It is. Uh, let me see here. Are we expecting too much from TV shows? This is his next question. I mean, does every single TV show need to be prestige and high art? Can they just be fun and entertaining and unserious, as Joyce says? I remember someone complaining about Elspeth and how it's far too formulaic. Friendly reminder, a lot of shows have been like that ever since the dawn of television. Elspeth was intended to be a formulaic show, not a pre prestige spinoff of The Good Wife. Robert and Michelle King just wanted to do a Columbo-type show with Carrie Preston's iconic character in the forefront. Not everything has to be prestige. Let's not apply the principles of film to TV because they're different, even if some of the creators jump between the two mediums. Film Twitter is also reactionary to TV now and forgets that TV is just different in both the medium and the awards conversation. I think we lost the thread on TV. We need to reevaluate our relationship and perspective on TV. This is a problem on both the network and studio side and the viewer side and some podcasters who are talking about TV. What do you guys think? Feel free to weigh in or disagree, whatever you want to say about this. Thanks again and have a great day. And don't ask me if there'll be a game next week because I still haven't thought of a new one. Oh, wow. Writer's block for the Game Master. Joyce, a lot of that there was stuff I think we've talked about and you've definitely said Many oh times. yeah, I agree with um all of that basically. So, <laughs> I mean, is this, not much is, else. Is this my burner? Is it's not much else to say there. I don't know. I didn't know you were such a big Sabrina Carpenter fan. Um, I didn't uh, know either. It's I, weird. I will say one of the new, in general, everything about the online space is terrible. Even yeah. if you're watching, I mean, not us. We're great, but you know, everything else is pretty bad. Um, but I will say this year, maybe because I've been trying to pay attention to it more, or maybe because my algorithm is feeding it more, I feel like we're getting a lot more bad tv takes from people who are more interested in movies i think that's also because there every year there's more people who are interested in movies um trying to cross over yeah. into tv like we talked about like just trying to fill that space after the oscars before yeah. fall festivals and so you know I, it, it does feel like a lot of not a historical but just like not as not as honed in the conversation right and I, but i think like the the major issue here is just streaming has fucked up everything yeah um and i think that's why it 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 has really um manipulated and changed like people's expectations of what a, a tv show is and how to watch a tv show because i do think people watch tv shows wrong or some they watch some TV shows wrong. And I think I mean I think that's always been the case. Like I think people have there's always been people who watch TV shows wrong, but I think it's it's been exacerbated because of streaming. Because yeah, like now you have shows that are just like eight or ten episodes a season and you wait two years for the next season and you forget everything. It's like Game of Thrones, you know, that's like a high level production. They turned out a new season annually for six years. They were able to do that. And now, like, just yesterday, you know, like, Bridgerton, the showrunner. See, in two uh, years. Jess, Jess Brown. Yeah, Jess Brown. Yeah, she's like, yeah, season four, season two years, guys. It's like. <laughs> not ideal. It's just not ideal. What? Uh, that's I mean, I like was thinking it. about this um, the other day because, you know, we finally have, like, our first glimpse of Severance season yes. two. That premiered in February 2022. We're going to have three seasons of the bear before we have the second season of severance i thought like, it is the bear too... premiered in june 2022 i was excited i'm excited for it to return but i was like god almighty i do not remember i remember what no happened one remembers the finale, a but single thing <laughs> it's a long time it's been a long time yeah uh so no, and yeah and then like i think we talked about this last week too or maybe i don't know i feel like i say this every week but because of the shortened seasons we don't get filler episodes anymore 
right? And I think that's what, that is a lot of the loud people's complaints. Like they just want all plot and they're used to all plot. Um, and I think we also talked about this last year too, because uh, your favorite Succession season four episode was Living Plus, right? And that's probably one of like, you know, the the lower rated episodes, like, you know, by like the general public. And I always thought, like, I even said this last year, like, I think that's because that took a time out from the the mm-hmm. main plot of the, you know, the merger and everything. And they just went to LA. I mean, it was still kind of part of it because like Ace Guards was still there, but it was just this like presentation, like Living Plus, and people didn't like having that yeah. detour for just one episode when this is this is just TV, guys. Like, when you have just 22 TV. episodes a season. It's not TV. It's HBO. Now it's just TV. Yeah. And, I mean, like, even, like, the Breaking Bad, like, you know, they did 13 episodes. But people did not, like, Fly was very divisive, right? That was... Right. Um, you know, I, I love Fly. But that that was, um, you know, like, just the two of them. And, and that was just, like, a bottle up. Ep- that was literally a bottle episode. So people also use the term bottle episode wrong we've talked about this for sure yeah it's a bottle episode because they're trying to save money and they are just filming on existing sets it's not a bottle episode when they're like you know succession on a boat that's not a bottle episode because they rented that yacht <laughs> so even though the entire episode was on that boat but yeah that was a bottle episode but people didn't like that episode because they just wanted you know like the larger story mm-hmm. you know um and yeah like i think people don't have that patience anymore and so, yeah you're supposed to watch weekly and like the binge format has also changed everything too because people just want the next thing right away so they feel like they're getting all that character development right away when they're not really if they actually watch it week to week like tv is supposed to be watched i also think another thing that we've seen the shows are everything is too long movies are way too long i have a hat choice i'll wear it next time we do a movie thing it says make movie shorter the amount of comp it's this big bold letters make movie shorter the amount of compliments or conversation that has started in real life from regular people. You, you is, know, I love a 90 minute movie. It says 90 minutes with credits in the back. I'll show you it next time. Uh, multiple real people just like at the bagel shop. They're way too long. I'm not watching Oppenheimer. Fuck killers of flower moon. And I'm like, TV is like that too. So many 55 minute episodes on streaming for no yeah, reason. They're abusing streaming. Cause they think they have no and commercials. They can make it. T- it needs to be 40 minutes and 22 minutes. That's what we need. 42 minutes and 22 minutes. Yeah. That's what I want. I, if anyone hasn't watched the Anthony Mackie, Tyler James Williams, Actors on Actors, I highly recommend. It's just a, in general, a great conversation, but they they really talk about this like towards the end because, you know, Tyler grew up on TV. Yes. Right. And right, like right. Um, now like Mackie is just like getting into TV and stuff. And Mackie asks him like, if you can only do like film or TV, you know, whatever for the rest of your life, what would you do? And he like Tyler, like no hesitation. He's like, I would do TV. I'm a total TV guy. I, I, it's hard. And I love the challenge. I love the 22 episodes. Like that is TV to me. That's how I grew up. And like it, like, I love like developing a character and, you know, following, you know, this like long journey with them. Like I, that's what I love about TV and that's TV. And then he like tossed it back to Mackie and Mackie would, he kind of deflected. He was like, you know, my friends and I just joke like, you know, like TV money is different. Like you, you guys like, pay, like live well, like it's obnoxious. And he's like, and like, it's the industry so different now because it used to be like, you know, you dream of working with this director on a two hour movie and now they're all coming into TV. So you could just make a TV show of Ron Howard. Right. And you can do it. So, and which is like what's been happening for the last like, you know, seven years. So, yeah, it's, but, you know, uh, TJ Dubs, one of us, a TV person, all the way. Joyce, this email is from Matthew. Hi, Joyce and Chris. This one's mainly for Joyce as a TCA member. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh gosh, we didn't even talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't talk about it because I knew we had emails coming. We have another one too. What do you think of the duplicate nominations for Ripley, Fargo, and Baby Reindeer across the limited and drama categories? We've previously had annoying situations like Watchmen winning new series when it should be reserved for ongoing or continuing shows. It was clear Watchmen wasn't by the time TCA voting took place. But this year is particularly egregious in terms of categorization. It would be interesting to hear why you think this happened and if there is anything that could be implemented to prevent duplicate nominations happening again. Also, unrelated tennis question incoming. The grass season is approaching and I wanted to know, do you think Jabour? On Jabour can win Wimbledon this year. 
She has been in two consecutive finals, losing both times. Will it be third time lucky? Um, I'm I'm kind of concerned about her this year because she's been injured this year. So I don't know if she can make it three finals in a roll, uh, roll, roll, row. Um, and yeah, she she I mean she choked those two finals, man. <laughs> she she should have won both of them. Um, and she choked those. So I I don't know. Um, but today we did get the news uh, confirmation that Rafa is not going to play Wimbledon. I saw that news. I saw. I saw. You that saw news. that one? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, yesterday he was officially named to the Olympic team, which right. is on clay, obviously. So, you know, the service change is not going to be good for him. But um, anyway, yeah. Uh, no, I despise the double dipping. So, so how does that happen? I have no idea. So here, so I'm a member, um, as Matthew, I assume knows since this was addressed to me. He knows you're <laughs> a member of TCA. They sent the embargo nominations on Sunday night. Okay. And I thought I was having a stroke because I was like, why are these limited series in drama? And I was like texting with my friend who's also in TCA and like, it was the same. We were like, what the fuck? Like, why is this, why are they both here? And like, this should not be allowed. Like, what the hell? And I've inquired about this and I've got no answers. So I have no idea why they allowed this. It's like insane. And so the the way like voting works right it's we we get to nominate four things and so they there's no like previous designation like oh so and so was a a drama series and like so and so was limit series um it's like the only the only sticklers about like writing out the the correct format like you have to if it's like a, an actor you write like the the name comma and the full show title like you can't write law and order svu you have to write law and order special victims unit otherwise they toss it out if you just right. write svu so like that's the only thing like they're a stickler about and i'm just like okay i understand if some people are voting for like ripley in in both right like if that like whatever like there's nothing stopping them from just typing it in right but like if when you're counting the ballots you shouldn't allow this like you should just really silly. decide like this is a limited series, so we're going to toss all the drama votes for Ripley out. Like, same thing with Fargo, same thing with Baby Reindeer. Like, you make that decision. Or you could just, you know, like, be like, it'll be nominated in the category in which has the most uh, votes, right? Like, that. I don't agree with that one, but I would still take that one over this double dipping. Very. Which is insane. Pretty insane. And so I don't know why they allowed this, and they didn't explain it. They also didn't explain why they cut down to six slots because they expanded to six slots in 2021. And they did explain that because they were like, oh, there's so much great TV. Like, cool. Not as much great TV this year, I guess. Now it's, it's, it now, it's so bad that we have to nominate limited series and drama series. Twice. Twice yeah. Time. And then I was also thinking, it, it was like clear to me that they were just nominating, like they like these limited series or whoever. So I, I didn't vote for, I obviously did not vote for these shows in drama series. But I was thinking that the people who did this, like they obviously just love these shows and they didn't like enough drama series. And so they voted for them too. Like, I don't, maybe some someone actually did vote for both of them in, on the same ballot in both categories, which is, I, yeah, I don't know. But it, it, it's so it kind of reminded me of the conversation, like we've had this whole season with the Emmys is like how weak drama is. I'm like, it's weak, but just let it be weak. Like you're taking spots away from like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, right? Or like slow horses. It's just really like weird. Loki, you know, like it's it's also none of those shows like it's not even like none of those shows are they're so clearly limited. It just is so strange to have them like Baby the Reindeer is for sure a limited series. Yeah, and there's no like, like debate. Be, like imagine if it wins drama series, but loses limited series <laughs> would be really silly. I'm sure that won't happen, but like, yeah, and I've all, I've, I've never agreed with having limited series uh, be eligible for new program. So like because I feel like for new program it's like your it's like the promise of like continued greatness right like any show can be great for one season and then like this so 10 years ago uh we um nominated true detective in Mm -hmm. limited word one at at tca and so that went against the emmys or what they did for the emmys which they submitted it in drama right so and then like this year for Night Country, 
it's nominated in drama and not limited. Right. But I feel like it did get votes in limited and just like missed, you know? Well, they had to make room for these other shows. I don't know. It, it's... I don't know. It was like, I hated it. And then when I was, vo- I already cast my votes and I like cringed again when I saw all of them there. It's just like, it's it's bad. I don't, I don't even know. I didn't even know what the question was, but it was no, that bad. was that it. Was that was it. <laughs> uh, this one is from Chris Joyce. Another Chris, not me, but it could be me based on the email. Hi, Joyce and Chris. With the release of Hitman on Netflix this week, I have two questions for you. First, the obvious. What kind of Oscar prospects do you see in the film? Can a streaming film from June be remembered? I have it making makeup, adapted screenplay, picture, and maybe actor. But that's only because I think Netflix will have a flop year with the rest of their slate. Question two. In an alternate universe where Netflix foregoes a theatrical release and pushes Hitman's streaming debut up a week or two to qualify for this year's Emmys, how well would the film do? I know they've been off TV movies, but would Hitman change that? Would it take any big wins away from Baby Reindeer? Love the show. Keep it up. That's from Chris. Not me. Um. Well, it could be you again. Because I love this movie. Uh, that is, uh, I'll just answer the first part. Extremely bullish on the, the Oscar prospects there. I'd love to see it, but I think the best hope is adapted screenplay. And even that, I think, is like a long shot. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Emmys, I think it would have definitely gone in for like TV movie if it was up there. And I could see a world where Glenn gets in for actor, but with five slots, I don't think so now. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I I don't think it'll show up for Oscars. No. So But I do um, think the Emmys thing is I think it would have gotten in for TV movie for Emmys. Yeah, I think it could get TV movie and like nothing else, probably. <laughs> would be tough. Would be tough. Yeah. Uh this one's from our pal David L. Somehow shorter than Mike's email. A twist. Always keep them guessing, Joyce. Hi, Chris and Joyce. It's David L. back again. My question this week is, since drama is very thin this year, how many uh, show submissions do you think we'll have? So we already answered all this, so I'm not going through this part of it. Uh, by the way, I agree with you, Joyce, that Shogun switching to drama was ridiculous because I prefer suspense, and I don't want another sweep ceremony like last year, or should I say this year? where it felt exactly like 2022 with chalk Oscar winners. I swear I'm not one of the people on Twitter who asked for this. Shogun and the Bear are both obviously going to win, but I'm not convinced Baby Reindeer is officially the front runner because it doesn't feel like a consensus accessible show like Beef. It could easily be one of those international shows like I May Destroy You that's critically acclaimed and only wins a writing category because of its divisive tone. Lastly, speaking of television, Chris, how could you have not seen better things before? It was one of my favorite shows that I watched with my mom before she died recently. And like Joyce, it was where I first saw future Oscar contender Mikey Madison. Joyce, you really know what's up more than Chris. Wow. Do yourself a favor and watch better things. I promise you'll love it. Hope you guys have a great weekend counting those ballots. I'll be going through them as well myself. It's David L. Wow. Harsh. Uh, He's coming for you every week, man. It's, it's uh, I guess, it's lighthearted ribbing. Uh, Joyce, baby reindeer. Uh... It feels like the knives are sharpening for this. At least if you read Matt Bell- Bellany's new- newsletter. He's like ready to knock it. He's This is his, I said this to you in Slack, but this is like his new Emma Stone is a scab because she went to premiere a short film at New York Film Festival. His baby reindeer is inspired by a true story, not based on a true story or is a true story. And it there should be more people outraged about this. And there's a defamation lawsuit and all these things. Uh, sure. Um. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, just real world stuff circling the show, but I don't know how that would affect it anyway. And to David's point there, I think if there was, I don't like, there's no, what show would beat Baby Rain? You know what I mean? Like, it might be divisive in some ways, but I'm like, what show would beat it? none of these presumed contenders like what would actually win i think people would want fargo to win but we know they're not really hot on it um yeah there's fargo lessons in chemistry um true detective which is also divisive um online at least yeah i think like lessons Uh, in chemistry i think the win is the nomination uh yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm like, could Brie win? I don't know. I she mean, she could win certainly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like that. You know, it'll it'll be good for Apple, obviously, to get its first limited series nomination. In, in terms of taking down Baby Reindeer, though, like Beef last year, like I don't think I actually disagree with that. I don't think Beef was a consensus show either. I mean, I guess it was, but it was certainly had divisive aspects to it. But there was really nothing else that would even com- come close to winning. No. And I think with Beef 2, you know, they had to curtail their campaign because of the whole David Cho thing. Oh, yeah. That would, remember remember that? that? Yeah. yeah that, no that one remembers crazy. that, Joyce. Yeah, no one remembers that. So obviously the the external issues with Baby Reindeer are completely different, you know? And I mean, like, remember last year, people thought, like, that would affect Beef. And, like, it didn't at all. Because, yeah. like, no one cares. I, I, no. <laughs> Uh, so I I don't think that, like any of that would affect Baby Reindeer, and I I think it's it's uh like more embraced than I May Destroy You. Definitely, too. I don't know one person who watched I May Destroy You, but I'll tell you what show people have talked about in real life is Baby Reindeer. Same, I don't know, I don't know a normie who's seen it. And like normal people, it's the number one show on Netflix basically for like three months. Yeah, and that's like something that normies recommend to each other too, like after they see it. Yeah, you know. I definitely think it was way more wide. I think it's even more, I mean, it, it is more widely seen than even Beef, right? I mean, like, it's like one of their biggest shows ever. Yeah, isn't it? Now it's like in the top 10 of most. Yeah. I mean, like, this is like a massive so phenomenon. Dateless. So yeah, I feel like that's going to go a long way to keeping it from like a niche win for writing. I think it could win writing. I think it probably will win writing, maybe directing. Certainly Richard Gadd and, and, and Jessica Gunning would win as well. That's my probably take. Yeah, although I've seen some, uh, I I think it's mostly like film Twitter, like very emboldened by Andrew Scott's Gotham win. Yeah, a lot of campaigning for him too, and obviously yeah. beloved figure, but. But, you know, Gotham, he won that, um, voted on by a panel of four people, one of whom was his co-star, so. Email us at slugfest at goldderby.com and you can become a regular emailer, much like judgmental TV fan Joyce. Oh, they're back. They're back and they've got a bone to pick. With. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I know you both love hacks, and I assume you saw Vulture's bizarre story that claimed the show, one, isn't a good comedy, and two, its comedy has become a crutch, holding it back from apparently exploring its more dramatic story potential. Ignoring the fact that the show is actually brilliant and extremely funny, this story feels like it was written by someone who fundamentally misunderstands not just the show and its characters, Deborah and Ava do not have a surrogate mother-daughter relationship, And the show does not always take Deborah's side, but also what comedy is looks like. I know we've talked a lot about this lately because of the bear, but what do you think people are missing here? Why is it so hard for people to understand this concept of comedy? And how on earth do you come away from this show with any of these thoughts? It's from Judgmental TV fan. Uh, We have seen that story. Not not my fave dot gif. No. Um, it just, if it, it feels like just rage bait, rage bait, clickbait. Yeah. I think I called it belly flop rage bait in our column that we do. It just is like that. It's the, it's the Mad Max meme. Uh, that's bait. Like you're just writing hot takes to generate interest and get clicks, which I'm sure this did. Like, yeah. We're talking about it. Judgmental TV fan was pretty mad about it. Uh, I don't need to go. I just, I disagree, but, uh, I will say like. The show taking Deborah's side was a weird uh, thing because I think if you not watch the show at all, like the show actually doesn't take Deborah's side. I think I, I just talked to Jen Statsky, Joyce. So like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the tank for hacks. But we were saying, I was like, one of the things I like about the show is that you are all the all the perspectives are presented. And she's like, that's something that they try very hard to because there's a version of the show where it's like the boomer is always wrong or the boomer is always right. And the Gen Z is always wrong or the Gen Z is always right. And it's like reductive. And this it's like everybody's opinion is kind of heard. And maybe there's a third option between like they're not going to maybe agree, but there is like a third way into it. Or at least we're not going to like put our finger on the scale and really like kind of push one side or the other and i think that's why i'm like that is completely wrong just like a straight up yeah wrong... when, when i read that last week i was like what show are you watching right. like just you, like it sounds like you just watched like 
half an episode. Right. Like comedy maybe is subjective. So if you don't think it's funny, I would disagree. But I could say like, okay, you just don't have the same sense of humor as me or many others who think the show is funny. But like, that's just objectively wrong that the show doesn't take, that takes Deborah's side over Ava. And in fact, often takes, doesn't take Ava's side, but Ava's often proven right. Yeah. Like we talked about this, I think after Yes And, or even like maybe before that, um, like one day too like they have they always have these aren't you like then the, throughout the entire series like the, one of the running conversations they have is about sexuality right and they always they're very fair to them each of them like presenting both sides and then it's about like how like the increments by which uh deborah has changed or like softened her stance on certain topics because of Ava, like she left her colonoscopy right. group defending Ava. I, you know, I think that it's an interesting, the run of the like, hacks in succession, I feel like are like connected, certainly not just because of the finales of season two and now the season three, but just in general, I do think there is an interesting thing there with succession was always like people don't change. And so uh, they're just never changed, right? Like the characters really don't change on succession, even if there are little incremental tweaks or something, they are who they are. And with Hacks, I think that's also somewhat true, but I think you see Deborah at least hearing another, like just because you don't change doesn't mean you're not, like you're not- She likes, she likes being challenged. Yeah. Or, and, and she hears, like she might not change her viewpoint, but she's heard another perspective that is new to her. And yeah. so that's how people change is like hearing new perspectives it might not change who they are and certainly might not change their opinion on something, but at least they could be like, oh, I never thought of that. I still don't agree with you, but at least I'm now hearing something that is new information to me, right? Like- so I think that's an interesting thing about the show and completely just botched in this 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 hot take. And then uh They're they're the, definitely not mother daughter. I would that was another one where I was like, red flag here. Like what just because like she's old and Ava is young, like no, that's not I a think mother daughter. They're mentor mentee. I think yeah. they play it for different things. I mean, I've seen people say it's like sexual in nature, which is weird too, but I've actually seen that, right? And like certainly like DJ kind of treats her like a sister. So I could see that being like part of the idea that it's a familial thing. That one didn't burn me as much. I don't agree with it, but I was like the other one. I just was like, this is super wrong. No. Yeah. I, I just don't, it's not mother daughter because like we see not that she has like a you know great healthy relationship with DJ. Right. But you see how differently she treats both of them she respects you know? it's more much more of a work-based respect not a mother yeah daughter respect. yeah she she likes that fight with ava yeah and then yeah. uh comedy is a crutch holding back from apparently exploring its more dramatic story potential just like what I, I thought you just said it wasn't funny uh but like okay so it is funny but i don't i think the dramatic story potential is they're ex able to express it and because of the writing is so sharp because it is so funny and because the acting is so good, they're able to do it in a way that's not like really cliched and hack. Yeah. And I, I don't know what, I mean, again, like comedy is subjective, but I, I'm not sure what they like want from the show. Cause the, the story also opens with them saying that they're pathologically humorless. So I'm like, okay, there you go. Right there. Maybe but, not the right assignment. Like this is not like the show is not the bear, which is like, heavily dramatic right and then just some like um haha -ha scenes like you know like nice chuckle scenes like i laugh out loud at hacks maybe some funny. other people don't but um it's very funny and that like that like allows them to pursue these dramatic beats every now and then yes right like that's why they both work um and it's just weird to say like it's hindered its dramatic abilities just after strange, that finale <laughs> strange take i mean but clearly like engineered to be like somebody in like clearly not a fan of the show so like not everybody it's has fine to like you don't show. need to like the show but then like yeah. that's that turns into like hey i'll just write this article and get people mad about it Who and it's like it's fine to write a dissenting viewpoint and have a dissenting viewpoint but it like that's just some things are just like factually incorrect here <laughs> tough like tough. like the yeah like the taking deborah's side thing like for sure mm -hmm. and like you could say like you know the mother daughter thing is subjective maybe like open interpretation but like definitely not the the deborah's viewpoint like you see in one day like when she's promising the boys 
she's gonna like convert to green stock strange you know it's like a joke but it's like she is slowly considering or she is considering things that ava is saying to yes. her so uh yeah not 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 my fave it's just bait it's all it's all just just hot take uh nonsense uh this email is from thora joyce another uh it could maybe be friends with judgmental tv fan uh hi joyce and chris part of my french but what the hell is happening with the tca awards they used to honor acclaimed shows that likely didn't stand a chance of being recognized by the Emmys, but now most of their nominations read like every other half-assed award show, save for Reservation Dogs and We Are Lady Parts. Okay, actually, the comedy stuff is pretty decent, I guess. But I guess the bigger question is why are multiple limited series also nominated in the drama category? At least the Emmys doesn't allow this ridiculous type of double dipping, and there was no explanation for it. Three question marks. That's from Thora. Thora and Judgmental TV fan, you guys should hook up because like this is like definitely in the same vibe. But we talked about this. Holy shit. That is really Yeah, dumb. and also with Michael too. So <laughs> and Michael, every one of you guys. I like that our listeners are all uh of the same, they have the good vibes. Yeah. Um I mean, well, you know, we just discussed about, that. Like, about the the multiple things certainly we talked about, but how about the idea that like this used to be like something to elevate other shows and now it's just like rubber stamping what everybody wants to see uh, nominated um i i think uh i a, a big part of that is because the makeup of the group has changed a lot um even since i've been a member um it's been like 12 like 13 years since. Mm -hmm. um but even in like the last couple years there's just been a lot of turnover because uh you know uh breaking news media is in the shitter oh, a lot really? of layoffs yeah tell, i don't know if you've that, heard no tell me more yeah um a lot of layoffs you know okay. uh, a lot of outlets sites shuttering imploding yikes i should look into this yeah and you know when that happens I mean, like we're being sarcastic, but we know, like we have friends, like yes, many who people lost know. jobs, yes, like who've been great. laid off. Yeah, it's, it's, not it's really problem. bad. Yeah, um, and a lot of them have left journalism and mm -hmm. changed careers. Um, and then you know some of them are TCA members, and when you change careers, it can no longer be a member, and so they left. So yeah. some of my friends have left that I've been in the group with for years, you know, and then every year there are new members, they add new members. So it's just, it's a different breed of people and writers now. So um, yeah. And also I think even though the name is television critics association, it's not all critics in there. Like I'm not a critic. I would never call myself a critic. That's not my full-time job. I've written reviews. Right. But I'm not a critic. It's just you just have to cover TV, like a, be a TV journalist. Yeah, critic is now like a, a catch-all term a lot. Of time. Yeah, and that's it's also like a editing. job that's um, being killed across, like um, you know, outlets too. Like you know, there's not a lot of places don't have full-time critics anymore. You know, it's sure. just kind of like staff people or like freelancers writing critic, uh, writing writing reviews here right. and there. So I think like that's part of it in terms of like uh changing tastes and also just like there's so many shows now and yeah like ideally like it should be there should be more variety here and i think there would have been had it not been for the double dipping that's a crazy that is just crazy i just i don't understand it really so funny. i mean i've talked to uh, like several no, people uh, no one thought that was we're good. just like what yeah. like like other members and just like Very strange. no idea so uh Last one here, Joyce, before we sign off and get this up for all the people to watch today. Can't wait to spend three hours uploading it. Gonna have to reboot my computer. This one's from Uma Joyce. Emailed us at slugfests at goldderby.com. Hi, Joyce and Chris. I know it's very, very early to be talking about next year's awards, but I'm really liking Jake Gyllenhaal and Apple's Presumed Innocent so far. It seems like this could be the type of role performance that could earn him some nods. What are your thoughts? Um, well, we love Presumed Innocent. Absolutely fucking love it. I am like thrilled with this show. I was truly multiple times like this laughing. It's it's a hilarious show uh, about murder, but it is like, oh my God. So well, many it was twists. a book and a movie and now it's a show. My, I'm yeah. assuming people have seen the movie. 
I'm not going to spoil what the happens. But let's not spoil it just in case they don't. But uh, <laughs> yes, I'm sure people have seen the movie or watched, read the book or read the Wikipedia page. And now they can watch the TV show. Yeah. Joyce, this show is the best. I love it so much. They sent seven of the eight episodes. I can't I know, wait. I'm like, give me the finale, finale. guys. Uh, I've seen mixed reviews and I just do not agree. I'm like, this is so much fun. Uh, Jake is awesome, but I think Bill Camp should win an Emmy for this. He's so good. He is just like chewing the scenery and leaving no crumbs in the best way. It's absolutely fantastic. And as good as you want him to be, he's somewhat better somehow. It's it's just like a fun show. And I think this is also kind of going back to uh, Michael's rant too. Like, I don't, this is like not prestige, right? I would not call this prestige, but it's like, no. like good mid. You know, we it's, just we need we need like bring middle TV back. It's a perfect summer show. It's like a summer thriller. It like it is that classic David E. Kelly kind of like summer show, right? Like Big Little yeah. Lies. It's in that where it's like very entertaining. I think even for this show, I was like, oh, like did you like I like I watched we watched like seven all seven episodes within like three like two or three days, and I was like some of them drag like a couple of them. I was like oh, this could maybe have been instead of eight episodes what if it was like seven episodes right or like you know like it could have been like a little tightened uh but it's still really entertaining and jake is great i really think jake gyllenhaal was like watching gone girl and just said like what if i did that finch won't hire me anymore what if i did my own gone girl he's I I love all the choices he's been making for like the last five years. He makes all the best choice. I I really yeah. do think he's like a fantastic actor, and I love him with Peter Sarsgaard. The, the fact best. that their brother in laws so... is so hilarious. I I love when people. I'm like, like you get me hook line and sinker. Like if you're like friends or just like related somehow, and you play adversaries. Uh, but like it's just, I just love seeing Peter Sarsgaard seething at him and like wanting to take him down it's the he, best he, you'll it's so far only two of the episodes have aired so people will get to see more of that but the relationship evolves in so many hilarious ways one of my friends was like oh it's like if, if peter sarsgaard's bat the character in the batman was actually given a character and i was like i literally don't even remember him in the batman but uh yes i think that's accurate do you think uh, this is maggie gyllenhaal's favorite show if it's not something's wrong i actually think yes she would probably love it, it it's just fantastic uh it looks great uh, it's made by TV people, which I think is important, right? We were talking about this, right? I feel like it is like a TV centric idea, not like a movie that was like drawn into TV, even though it was a movie. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like it's like people. It's yeah, made JJ by people, like, is, uh, is an EP, um, and Greg Yatanis, uh yeah. directed a couple episodes. Yeah, who you know from House. Just um, it feels like that's like it, the vibes are like oh we know how to make a TV show. Yeah. Um, and I I don't know about like awards. Like I could see him like getting like, you know, like a globe nomination or something. I, I don't know like if he'll last until next Emmys. I, here's what I'll say. Like it's tough for these. We know early is actually probably better for limited series. And who knows what like this year, there might be a lot of stuff or maybe not. But I do think it's entertaining enough. And it's like very easy to watch that people will watch it. And I think they will not have a hard time generating like a renewed interest in like their version of that this year is the crowded room. Apple that premiered June 9th last year and uh they've kept it in the conversation but it's not a breezy show that I think people really no. enjoyed no. and uh this one is breezy and fun and so like I think it'd be like oh I like that show right even though it's about a murder um I, I don't think who knows but I was like I think Bill Camp could definitely get in though he is so good he's on fire in this show and I also just love whenever Bill and Elizabeth Marvel work together it's like let's just do another one so we could just hang out on set you truly know? just eating dinner together it feels like yeah that's they're it. not it's like there's scenes it. with them at the table together and I'm like is this the documentary part of the movie or yeah. a show or <laughs> just like uh I talked to Elizabeth Marvel last year for Mrs. Davis and Love and Death, your favorite show. Mm -hmm. And she was on the set and she was like, it's great. We're having so much fun. And I was like, no shit. You're fucking hanging out with your husband. It's awesome. I love them. Put them put them in everything, really. Uh, yeah, I can't get enough of this show. And I love uh, uh, so much. I can't wait for people to watch more of it so I can like be able to talk about it more. But uh, Chase Infinity plays uh, Jake's daughter, who is going to be in uh, the new PTA movie playing Leonardo DiCaprio's daughter. Yeah. Also, this this show has a uh, good texts. A lot of good texts. Good texts, not bad texts. 
no it's really good texts yeah. and like just great and and truly like peter sarsgaard is like on another he is so great playing this character he's such an he has no va vanity at all playing just a stupid asshole and i love it so much and then ot fabenye who's the new da they um you know he takes over from uh bill's character and he's I don't even know what he's doing, and I mean that in the best way because it's I, I highly text, entertaining. I text you this; it's really like he like decided like, what if Miranda Priestley was my character? That's how he talks, and like he's like because like you know like they're double he's double teaming with Peter against yes. Jake and Bill. Yes. It's just great. It's so, it's so much fun. Uh, Ot must be on the Apple payroll because he's also in Loot and was on my favorite limited series from last year. We crashed. Um, that was two years ago. We crashed two years ago. He's been How on the Apple payroll for a long time. Um, and, and he's still on the Handmaid's payroll. Great. Good for, good for him. I love I love him. Love the actor. Love the show. Great show. If you're not watching Presumed Innocent, you should. I actually think it's like of the summer shows so far. I'm like, this one's definitely top of the list. I was watching another Apple show, Joyce. I'll re reserve judgment of it for now. But I'll tell you offline, not my fave in terms of summer shows. Hmm. I have I I feel like I might know what that is. I guess we'll discuss okay. it after I hit stop here. Just this is so much fun. So next week we'll be back with our renewed picks. I guess we'll do a full update of all our predictions. You're gonna make some deranged move. I just so know. many. Colin from accounts, baby. Let's go. Whatever mailer I just got from the FedEx truck that pulled behind me. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Who knows? So easily bought. Someone email and make chris change another prediction to something you want anything slugfest at goldderby.com joyce have a, a good time we'll talk to you then all right bye <laughs>